So there may be a little button you have to hit allow. Yep. Um, awesome. So thank you so it, yeah. much, Zoe, for being here tonight. Um, and thank you for joining Rhonda and for everyone who's going to watch this recorded. This is our June 2023 Living Well with Cancer series. And we have Zoe Isaacson from Sky Branches Yoga presenting. So Zoe, I'm going to kind of hand it off to you. Thank you so much, Jen. Thank you. I really appreciate it. And I'm so excited to be here. Um, I'm wondering, is there a way, can I be spotlighted? spotlight. That's okay. If not sometimes just to make, make my screen bigger, it is okay. The way it is. Yeah. Okay. I'm not no worries. Sure. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. Don't no worries. No worries. Um, it's, it's fine. So anyway, uh, I'm Zoe with sky branches yoga. Um, I'm a yoga instructor here in Ithaca, New York. And I also have, um, I do a group of yoga classes online with Sky Branches Yoga. So I'm really happy to be here. And I thought we would do a couple things first, um, an informal chat, kind of just explaining what brought us here. If we want to share, I'm a firm believer in sharing if you want, don't share if you don't want to. Um, so thought we would, let me just share my screen for a second. Okay, so that is me. I'm Sky Branches Yoga. Um, I've been teaching yoga for about seven years. I taught in New York City uh, and Queens in different parts of Manhattan. And now I teach online and in the Finger Lakes. So super happy to be here. Um, let's go ahead and just start with my slide. I'm not an artist. I'm just telling you that up front. Okay. <laughs> All right. So here I am. Um, just a couple of things. It's nice to know where we're going. I think when we can, we don't always know where we're going, but today I, I have a rough idea. I'm not sure if we'll get to all of it, but just so you are aware. Okay. Uh, some optional introductions. If you feel like introducing yourself. We'll do a little brainstorm about yoga and meditation. So what are the things that you already know or have already experienced about yoga and meditation? And nothing is a perfectly fine answer as well. Um, and just a little lecture at, of, about yoga and meditation. If you have any questions and um, if you are watching the replay and you have questions about something I'm saying, I'm sure you can uh, send an email and it might get, get to me, so I'm happy to answer anything you might have. Uh, we'll start off with some centering. Uh, if you're watching this, maybe you just need a few moments to get into your body, into your breath. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about Kriya Yoga, um, some movement we'll explore, asana, and then work with some breath control, pranayama, and then meditation. And uh, just before we move forward, everything I say is optional. They're all invitations. You never have to do what I say. Uh, the most important thing is to really listen to your body um, without any judgment, without any kind of rule book or expectation, and just be open and receptive. Okay. All right. So I thought um, I would just start off. I introduced a little bit about myself. Um, and maybe Rhonda, would you be comfortable sharing? Sure, yeah. And if not, so, that's totally fine as well. No, no. Thanks, Rhonda. Thank you. No, um, so I will, I have been doing yoga for a um, few years, and I also, you know, was in the studio, and um, now I take some, um, I do take some uh, yoga classes with Zoe, and um, am I it, like talking as far as the cancer, like the interest in that or in terms of I guess just what what brought maybe what brought you here that's what I would think yeah what what what, what piqued your interest about this hour and a half when I reached out to you <laughs> what is something you're hoping to learn or just explore in well, this so, time yeah so my mother um, my mother had breast cancer back in 2015 and I remember taking care of her and um 
Yeah, I mean, I I see even now to this day, you know, there's still there's just a lot of anxiety and a lot of concern. Um, and um, I do see the the importance for myself personally with calming and meditation and movement and yoga. Um, and so um, I think also for me, it's about like the health piece of it too, like taking care of my, you know, seeing my mother now taking care of herself a little better, you know, her, her diet, things like that. But I'd love to learn ways to support her as far as um, movement and specifically uh, any yoga and meditation. Thanks so much, Rhonda. Thank you. Yeah, that that's what I had in mind. <laughs> Perfect. Um, so I should say, I guess, a little bit about myself that um, while I haven't had a personal uh, journey with cancer myself, I have had family members who have been on a healing path with cancer as well as uh, some of the people that come to me uh, interested in private yoga sessions are also recovering and healing. And just in general, a lot of people who have different physical concerns uh, have explored yoga and found it to be incredibly healing in some way or another. I think we all come to yoga for different reasons, right? But ultimately, you know, we're all here, we're all here to feel, to feel good, to go inside of ourselves, um, to find the inner strength that's always inside of us, no matter what happens. So that's my piece. Let's go ahead and uh, just do a little brainstorm, okay? Um, if you're watching at home uh, before we continue, you can also just Silently think to yourself about the reasons that maybe you decided to come here today, um, what you're hoping to explore or experience from this time. Okay. All right. Go. Okay. So trying something new. I always like to try something new. Uh, I thought it would be fun to do an interactive writing board. Now, for those of you at home, that are watching the replay, obviously you're not gonna be writing right now with us, but you can go ahead and just write in a journal or a piece of paper or type something if you kind of wanna stay in the flow, if you're comfortable with that. So what I thought would be fun to do is just explore what you already know about yoga and meditation, okay? Um, you can type in the chat. Uh, there's also a Padlet here. We'll see if it works. If it's not, then we know it won't work. So, okay. All right. Um, I'm not sure if you've explored using a Padlet before, but um, if you have, is what do you already know about yoga and meditation? The bottom right is a yellow circle with a plus oh. on it. You see yeah. it? Yeah. So you can click on that. Um, it is anonymous. Um, so, so. You can type whatever it is you want to say about that, if you wish, okay? Or type in the chat or write in your journal. So what do you already know about yoga and meditation? Oh, okay. We'll just take a couple of minutes to do this. Whoops. I'll give another minute. Okay, I see you wrote something in the chat. Yoga means union. Meditation for me calms the mind. Okay. And over here in the Padlet, um, body movement, uniting mind and body. Yep. Okay. And then someone wrote, used as a tool to connect with mind and body. Devasana can be challenging, even though it's so relaxing. Yeah. Yeah. 
So these are all great things. Um, there's a lot of union that I hear with this mind-body connection. Okay. Great. And so those of you watching the replay, you can take your own personal inventory of what we know about yoga and meditation. Okay. So we know something, right? It feels like we've all experienced something related to yoga and meditation. We have an understanding that there's this connection between mind and body. Um, and just to piggyback the, the person that said Shavasana is challenging, right? When we're moving, a lot of times it gives our mind something to do, right? But as soon as our body is still, the mind needs something to do. So when we meditate, right? We train the mind to still, right? So uh, it's not surprising. Shavasana is challenging for a lot of people, yeah, including myself at times. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so we're going to talk a little bit about the health benefits of meditation. You might already know this. Um, it never hurts to hear it again. Okay. Um, so one of the things that we always hear, uh, if you have kids, you know, maybe uh, your your parents told you if you were having a tantrum, relax, just breathe, right? Because there is some science to that. When we take deeper breaths, right, we start to steady the mind. So when someone tells you to just take a breath, there's some science with that. So anything that moves your body out of balance is a stressor. That's not the benefit of meditation, but just to see um, where we're going with this, you know, any kind of physical concern, emotional concern, sometimes, you know, one happens after the other, um, that's considered a stressor. So anything that will move your body out of even the things that we ingest that might be harmful, for example, the, the smoke that was happening a couple of days ago, the crazy smoke from Canada. So that can be considered a stressor as well. Um, a doctor of Harvard Medical, Dr. Herbert Benson, he introduced the relaxation response. Um, and he found that yoga and meditation had more um, disease-fighting genes. So he did a study, people that did meditation versus the control group had more disease fighting genes. So there is science. It's not um, some kind of crazy woo woo thing, but meditation does have benefits. Uh, and then research found after two months, genes that fight immunity began to turn on, which is really extraordinary. And regular meditation, as you may know, it could improve immunity, relief, stress, lower blood pressure. And there are also many other benefits. I didn't wanna write everything, but there's a lot of things that are really powerful that meditation and yoga practice can, can do for you. Calming the nervous system, um, strengthening you, strengthening the mind and body, um, flexibility, if that's something that you're working on. You know, we can use it as a tool to take it where we need to go. Okay, um, if anyone has questions, please interrupt me. We're good? Okay. Okay. Um, other benefits of yoga. So yoga, we think of as the physical movement, but it's meditation, it's breathing. Um, so it's combined other things besides the movement. It's good for the bones. It improves the mood and your overall well-being. And, um, you know, if you've ever said, oh, I really don't feel like you're taking a yoga class or I don't want to move my body or then you do. And after you usually feel a little bit better than when you came in. Calms, what we call in yoga, the vritti, which is just like if you have a lake that's still, maybe you heard this analogy, and then um, there's ripples and waves, or you throw a stone in the lake or an ocean, right? And just like with our mind, our mind is naturally like this, but then we have these things called thoughts and worries and concerns and stressors that make it do this. 
So with yoga and meditation, we can bring it back to its natural state. Strengthens body, mind, and spirit. And uh, one of the things I really like to remind um, ourselves, including me, is that yoga brings us back to who we really are, right? This true essence, perfectly imperfect, not defined by our illness or our job or our role that we're playing in this world, right? But just bringing us back to this perfectly imperfect human that we all are, okay? Is that it? That might be it. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to stop the share. I wasn't sure if I did anything else. Okay. So um, does anyone have any questions before we move to the movement part of? No? Okay. So I have a couple things behind me. Um, if you're at home, you know, you can just pause it for a minute. Um, I'll wait a second if you need to grab anything. There's a lot of options for you today. Okay, so I'll take the traditional quote unquote yoga props. So if you happen to have a bolster, if you have some yoga blankets, um, that's great. You can bring them. You can bring blocks if you have them, but not everyone might have that. So I have some things for you to take as well. Okay couple of bed pillows. If you don't have blocks, um, you can always take these square pillows that you might have on the couch. Uh, something that I love to use, it looks a little crazy, but if you take pots and you can turn them over, right? They make your arms long, sometimes nicer than books because especially when we're healing from something we want stability right we don't want block uh, books that are swishing around so you just turn them over and they make your arms long okay um if the idea of being on the floor is not working for you a chair or even bed is totally fine all right so there's a lot of different ways that you can just explore this to make it work for you Right. Okay, so we're going to start with a little bit of centering. Um, I'll start in a chair, okay, but for other people, you don't have to start in a chair. You can go ahead and lie down if that makes you feel good. If you don't feel um, nauseous or dizzy, okay, so a couple options for you. You can take a blanket get underneath your head and then roll onto one side first. Just this. Right. Go nice and slow. Whichever side works for you, and then you'll come to your back. Okay. Now, if you need just a little bit of elevation, this might get some people dizzy. It's magic. You can take your pillows or your bolster, place the short edge towards you, and then again, come to your back. So now you have this elevation, all right? Or you can sit in a chair, all right? So choose your own way to come into the zone today, okay? So I think I'll just go back to basics, all right? And then go ahead and lie down. You can start with the knees bent if you're on the floor. If you're on a chair, you can bend the knees, keep the soles of the feet on the floor. And then just rest your arms down by your side or in your lap if you're seated. If it feels safe, you can close the eyes or a soft gaze at the sky. Turn your head from side to side. 
Open and close your mouth, release the jaw. Lengthen your tailbone and begin dive in your space here. here. You might start to notice if there are any sounds around you. Maybe from outside. And start to tune in to any sounds in your home. Perhaps you hear the neighbors or someone you're living with. Taking this few first few moments to start going inward. Start of putting on pause what's going on around us and just taking this time to go inside our breath. And from here, take a full inventory, a full body scan. Notice what's going on with you today. There's not a right way to be here. You're just noticing where you're at at this moment. And then see if there's a story or a repetitive thought on the screen of your mind. Are you happy just being here right now? Or do you feel like you would rather be somewhere else? On the flip side, maybe you're hoping that you get to stay here for the remainder of time. Just where we're at. And then from here, bring one hand to your belly, any place that's comfortable. And maybe one hand to your heart. If there's any kind of pain or strain or incision, you can certainly bring your hands onto your thighs. But try to just connect your palms with some part of your body. It can be very grounding to feel place a hand on our body and just sort of feel that we're there. And then start to notice the cycles of how you're breathing. You don't need to manipulate or do anything specific here. You're just noticing how you're breathing. Is it in the belly? You feel your breath in the chest? Or is it somewhere in between the two? With yoga, we can always customize our breath to use it as a tool to give us what we need. Depending where we are in our healing journey, maybe you need to feel more grounded, more connected. So 
So if that's you, bring awareness into the belly. Inhale, feel the belly rise into the hands. And exhale, feel the belly fall. Inhale, feel the belly rise. And exhale, fall. Maybe you've been feeling a little down, a little low energy. And if that's you, you'll bring awareness into the chest and the heart space. There's some uplifting energy. So as you inhale, breathing to the heart, the collarbone spread wide. As you exhale, feel the chest fall, belly draws in and down. The head expands into the hand. And exhale, feel the chest fall. One more time. And then maybe you're not quite sure what you need. That's perfectly fine. And inhale and breathe into the space between the hands. Feel the hands spread. And then as you next exhale, feel the hands draw in towards each other and lower down. Inhale, feel the space between the hands spread. Exhale, feel that space draw back to the center. Just take this one more time. Release your hands down by your side or down by the sides of your chair. Just take a couple natural breaths here. From here, go ahead and roll onto your favorite side. All right, it can be the right, it could be the left. If you're seated, you're gonna stay there. Just take time, pressing it to the top hand, slowly with control, make your way up. Especially if you feel dizzy, you want to go extra. Oh, today, today. And then you'll find a seat. Again, either sitting on a chair. You might sit against a wall. Sit on a lot of props. Okay, so couple of uh, pillows, you could sit on a blanket, right? You just want to support yourself. So maybe crossing at the shins. You might put pillows or blocks under your thighs. Okay, even extending the legs. Lots of different ways to sit. Okay, it doesn't have to be this traditional yogi seat that we think of. And then from wherever we are, we'll bring the palms to the center of the heart. And perhaps coming back to that wish that you had or the reason that brought you here, what piqued your curiosity, Maybe make this as the guiding force or motivator throughout the rest of our time. Bring your chin to your chest, open the eyes, and then lift the gaze. And then release your hands down by your side. 
pressing into your seat, growing tall. Again, just being aware of your energy and thinking about what you need tonight. Do you need more energy into the heart? Do you need to stay more calm and grounded or somewhere in between? Release your arms down. And as you next inhale, circle your arms out around and up. Maybe to the count of four or five. Palms could touch, maybe they're far apart. And as you exhale, rotate the palms and press the air. So moving on your perfect breath, it's probably different from mine. Again, inhale, press down, reach the arms around and up. It's okay to close the eyes. If that's not quite for you, you can keep them open. Exhale, press the air away. One more time, we'll inhale, lift out of the belly, lift the heart as you take the arms around and up. And this time, exhale, we'll bring our palms to the center of the heart space. Bring your right hand down. So if you're on a chair, you can just kind of hold the side of the chair or bring it to the floor or block. And then take that left arm up and over to your right. And draw the left shoulder back, pressing into the left foot or the left seat. Well, a nice side stretch on that left side. Creating more space for the breath. And then inhale, come back to the center, lower that left. And press into that right side, open the right hand, inhale, the right arm floats up. And we over to your back as you open the left arm. Just thinking about what we talked about, how really yoga and meditation can help shift so many things that are going on the screen of the mind. And inhale, come back, lower that right hand, bring your hands to the center of the heart. From here, take your palms down on your thighs, and you can do the sitting wherever you're at. And as you inhale, slide your hands to the hip crease, roll the elbows and shoulders back, and lean forward. All right, so keeping your seat on the floor, try not to lift your seat for the cow pose. And then exhale, slide your hands towards your knees or shins and we'll round back, chin to chest, breathing into the back of the heart. And we'll go between the two. Inhale, reach forward, shoulders back, elbows back, open the chest. Exhale, round back. Now, if you have any kind of uh, situation going on in your chest, you can still join us. You'll so just take it 50% less. Another tool you can use here is if you want more energy, you might bring a longer inhale into the chest. And if you feel like you want to come Calm down, you'll bring more awareness into your exhale. Just keeping that in mind as we move between the cow and the cat. So moving with your heart as the initiator, not head, head in this pose. So in more ways than one, right? We're always bleeding by what's going on on the screen of the mind rather than the heart. Let's do this one more time. And then we'll come back to the center, sitting up tall. Inhale, take a cactus bend. So spread your fingers, roll the shoulders and elbows back. Now, if you really want some energy, you can roll the shoulders and elbows and lift the chin slightly forward. 
Okay, if that's too much for you, you've had a lot of anxiety, you can take it down a notch here. Exhale, we'll take a twist to the right, left hand on right thigh, right hand on your hip or the chair. You can always take your neck out of this twist. So notice where you start to feel your breath in the twist. You might feel it more in the chest here. Come back to the center. When you're ready, inhale, circle the arms out around and up. Exhale, cactus bend. And again, you decide where you want to take it. You can really expand the heart. Oop, I'm sorry, my cat is going to drink my water and then it'll spill on the computer. <laughs> sorry about that. Okay. <laughs> Exhale, we'll twist to the right, out uh, to the left, sorry. Right hand on left thigh, left hand at your lower back. Again. Gaze towards the center if you so choose. Twisting can help bring more energy into our system. That's where we choose to be. Come back to the center, inhale, take the arms out and round and up. And exhale, hands in front. So I am gonna have us come down to the floor now. Okay, just for a little movement, we're gonna open the hips and the heart before we come into meditation. So if you know you have knee sensitivity, I invite you to take a couple of blankets under your knees and ankles. You could skip that entirely and sit, or you can give it a try, okay? So depending on how it feels in your body today, you can take as many blankets as you wish. Take your blocks or your pots in front of you. And then as many blankets as feel good under your knees or under your ankles or your joints. And just really being kind to yourself, honoring that where you're at right now, certain things may feel good and certain things may not feel good. Okay, so always feeling free to adjust yourself to make shifts so you can feel good in your body today. And then you can spread the fingers out, soften in through the elbows here. And we'll just take that cat cow one more time that we did seated. As you inhale, drop your belly, lift your chest, roll the shoulders back. Exhale, all 10 toes on the floor, we'll round the spine and breathe into the back body. Just one more time here, inhale, tuck the toes, arch and open for the cow. Focusing on your exhale as you round the spine. We're gonna add what's called a Kriya here, which can be great if you need a visualization to steady the mind. Maybe you're someone that needs a little extra Right to go into the zone so we don't keep thinking about those repetitive thoughts. And you'll see if this works for you. But as you next inhale, you can still do this in a chair, folks, if you wish. Well, imagine there's a line from the crown of the head to the base of the spine. And as you exhale, imagine there's spaciousness in every cell of your body. Inhale, just feel that line from the crown of the head to the base of the spine. And as you exhale, feel a spaciousness in every cell of your body. One more time, inhale, feel the inspiration from the crown of your head to the base of the spine. And as you exhale, feel a transformation in every cell of your body. One more time, inhale, feel inspired on your breath. 
crown of the head to the base of the spine. Exhale, feel a transformation moving in every cell of your body. We'll come back to all fours here. Now you'll take your blocks or whatever whatever you have under your hands, okay? Notice how that makes your arms a lot longer, okay? Now from here, we're gonna step our favorite foot forward. And I say our favorite foot because we all have a favorite side, okay? You might wanna take that foot to the side and shimmy it forward in between your hands, okay? Now, some of you might wanna stay low to your belly, bringing your chin to your chest, especially if you feel a little low energy today. If you'd like to increase the energy, you can float your blocks up high or come onto your fingertips, rolling the shoulders back. And then if you really feel like you're ready, you'd like a lot of energy, you wanna play with balance, you can lift the arms and the torso and maybe explore that cactus fen again. Inhale, feel the line from the crown of the head to the base of the spine. Exhale into every cell of your body. Lower your hands down to the blocks, and we're just gonna switch, right? So taking your time to make these transitions, just like we do in life, we have to take time to move from one thing to the next. Okay, so go ahead and take your other foot forward, whatever foot that might be, tuck your toes. And again, choose to stay here, maybe focusing on the back body breath if you need to calm down a little bit. Or come onto your fingertips, you'd like a little energy in the chest. Or perhaps you're ready to lift the arm arms up, looking forward, and cactus bending. These are all great places to be. There's not one that's better than the other. Exhale, release your hands. We'll go ahead and come back into hands and knees or find your seat here. And then inhale, arch and open for the cow. Exhale, round for the cow. Coming back to a neutral spine, I'm going to show you a variation in a chair. So we'll just stretch out the back. If you feel nauseous, which sometimes we do, you can widen your arms, keep your seat over the heels, and just rest your forehead on a block or the floor. Keep your seat high. Okay, so this is a nice heart melting pose. If you'd like to take it into a downward facing dog, you can tuck the toes, reach your hips up and widen your feet as you press the mat away and look behind you. And if you're in the chair, same rules apply. Oops. If you'd like some energy, you could take your palms up at like a 45 degree angle, flex your feet and reach in both directions. If you don't quite want that, that energy, you can bring your palms down and just squeeze your heels. And then come back here to your neutral spine. We'll go ahead and do a couple more heart openers. And okay. I'll keep going between the chair and the ground. So from here, you might stay with this cat cow, especially if you're working with anything in the chest. Otherwise, you might come to your belly. And just bring your hands near your rib cage and gently lift the chest forward and up. Again, some of us might not want to come to our front, so you can take the cat cow. 
And you'll do this just a couple times, lifting up as you inhale, lowering down as you exhale. Same thing with the cat cow. And if you're in the chair, you can do the same thing. So do you want more energy? Focusing on the chest. You want to focus more on that forward fold. So maybe spending a few extra breaths here as you round. And then if you're on your belly here, we're gonna come back into hands and knees. This is a nice place to bring your um, pillows or your bolster. <laughs> Don't worry, chair people, I haven't forgotten you. You're gonna take your two pillows for your bolster, separate your knees, you can bring them between the knees here. And some of us might enjoy just giving it a big old hug, resting one cheek to one side. If that is not comfortable for you, you can do the same pose on your back. We'll just take a couple breaths here. You can also do same thing on your chair. Child's pose, balasana. Just take a couple breaths into your back body. The calming surrender of a forward bend. back to the center here and then find a seat if you're sitting on the floor you can sit on a couple of blankets again if you're sitting in a chair you're already there So floor folks, we're just gonna stretch the legs out long, flex the feet. If it feels really tight, take a pillow or something under your thighs. You can do this in a chair too, if you'd like to stretch your legs out. And let's just close our eyes here. Either bringing your fingertips to the floor or palms on your thighs if you're in the chair. See if your seat down and lift up ever so slightly. And as you inhale, just imagine a line from the crown of the head to the base of the spine. That inspiration. And as you exhale, feel how your exhale transforms into every cell of the body. Come into a twist. So some options are bringing that right leg on top of the left. You could bend your right knee and bring the sole of the foot on the floor, reaching through your left heel. Inhale, get tall. Exhale, once again, we'll just twist to the right. So just releasing your back after doing some of those heart openings. See if you can keep your gaze straight ahead rather than down at the floor. Exhale, come back to the center and we'll just switch sides, left leg over the right or bend your left knee, inhale tall, exhale to the left. Back to center 
and then extend the legs long here. Go ahead and um, bring the soles of the feet together here. Okay, you can also do this in a chair. You'll make this really wide diamond shape. And you can use your blocks under your thighs. You could use your pillows. You could use whatever you have. All right, so this is just releasing the hips. We often hold a lot of stuff we don't want to deal with in the hips. So we like to open the hips up towards the end. And then you can stay here, resting in a seated position, or, which is sometimes nice for nausea, you can start to round fold. Bringing your chin to your chest, you might take something under your forehead and rest your forehead on your props. Generally, when we do a forward fold, it invites calming sense, but really getting clear about how it feels in your body. And we don't need to force or strain anything while we're healing. Strength isn't necessarily from how we're moving our body what we can and can't do. But strength is honoring where we're at. Honoring where we're at at this moment. You went down, folks. Bring your hands to your thighs, draw your knees into the center. Give it a little shimmy side to side. And you're gonna find a comfortable seat. Comfortable may be the operative word since many of us are so used to being uncomfortable, right? And just dealing with it. So really see if you can understand what comfortable means for you. We're gonna be here for a couple moments. Um, you could even sit on the couch if that works for you folks. From here, you're going to go ahead and extend the arms. And as you exhale, you'll cross one on top of the other. You can place it low if you wish, if you have an incision, or you could place it high. But rest your elbows, fingertips under your armpits if you can. See if you can allow the eyes to close. In this shape, you start to notice which side of the nostril has more space for the breath. Is there a more dominant nostril? Do they feel about the same, same amount of air? They feel the same, you can stay where you are. If one feels uneven, take the bottom and cross it on top. Let's see if you can allow the eyes to close here. This is called Padadir Sasana. We're balancing the right and the left side. Solar side on the right side, more action-oriented side. 
and that cooler moon, lunar side of the left side. Bringing ourselves into harmony, coming back to ourselves. We got a little lost along the way. Bring your palms down to your thighs. Take a few natural breaths here. Bring your chin to your chest. Open the eyes. Peek at the floor. Bring your gaze back forward. So we're going to set up for a couple of what we call restorative poses in yoga to allow your physical body to just surrender. Okay. So first pose we're going to do is come to the floor. Just like we started almost. Take a blanket underneath your head or two blankets. We're gonna come into a uh, supported bridge pose. So roll to one side, come to your back, bend the knees, bring the soles of the feet on the floor. And then depending upon how it feels on your back, you're gonna lift your hips, either slide a block, a couple pillows, whatever you have under your back. Okay, so if there's any pain or tenderness, your body's saying, hey, get me out of here. So find a way to accommodate your body, right? Might take something softer. Maybe you like more energy. Right, you're ready. You're ready for a little more so you can bring more underneath your lower back so you find a little more height. And then you might bring one hand to heart and one hand to belly. You need to feel a little more connected. Or for a little more energy, open the arms out to a T or a cactus. Just observe what's going on on the screen of the mind here. Is this the hard part for you? Where the body is still, and now the thoughts are going wild. Bring awareness to the center of the heart. Imagine a white glow of light at the center of the heart with a slight green hue. And as you inhale, imagine that greenish light expands out. And as you exhale, imagine the green light comes back to the center of the heart. Inhale, that green light expands. Center. Again, expands and radiates. And exhale, center. You can take that visualization a few more times if it resonates to you. That green color is the color of our heart energy center or that heart chakra. 
unconditional love for ourselves, for others around us, and back to ourselves again. You have something under your back, press into your feet, gently lift your hips up, slide the block from underneath you and lower your hips down to the floor. Keep your pillows or bolsters to your left side. And we're just gonna move our hips to the left, bring your knees, uh, sorry, move your hips to the right, bring your knees to the left. Okay, so just bringing them onto a pillow or a bolster. You could even bring one in between the knees and ankles if it feels more soothing on your joints. Alternatively, you can still do this in the chair. Just bringing our system into balance again. Coming back to the center, if you're on your back, slide your hips to the center and pause, and then bring hips to the left, knees to the right. Again, taking your pillow between the thighs, underneath the bottom thigh, and we'll take that twist over the opposite direction. And then inhale, come back to the center. And we're gonna prepare for a couple minutes of final relaxation. So if you're sitting in a chair, seated, couple pillows on your thighs and rest your forearms here. You can also take a blanket even though it's kind of hot, but you never know where you are tuning in from and wrap it around you like a cape. Just rest here, here on your back. Sorry, if you can't see me. You can bring pillows or bolster underneath your thighs, support your back. And then for more little uplifting feeling, you can take pillows underneath you, just like you started some of us. And go ahead and lie down. So the heart is open and just rest thighs on top. So wherever you are, just find a place to be for a few moments. It's okay if it's hard or challenging to be here. And you might close the eyes if you wish. Or a soft gaze. See if you can relax the features of your face, the throat and the jaw. Relax the shoulders, the upper and lower arms. The chest. Relax the rib cage and the belly. Mm -hmm. 
Relax the right and left thigh. The knees, right shin, left shin. Top of the right foot. Top of the left foot. Sole of the right foot. Sole of the left foot. Right toes and left toes. Relax the entire right leg, entire left leg. And the crown of the head to the soles of the feet. Perfectly imperfect. No right way to be, but here. Begin to make small movements with the fingers, the toes. Bring your tongue behind the upper teeth at the gum line. You might start to extend the arms overhead and point through the toes if you're on your back or in a chair. Just taking a nice stretch. And then bring your hands back down. If you're on your back, you can bend the knees, hug your thighs into the chest and just give a little rock side to side. Roll onto your right side if you're on your back. Take a few stronger breaths there. Press into your top palm. Make your way into a seat if you're not already there. From your seat, join your palms into the center of the heart. And just notice the place you brought yourself to today without a right way to feel or be. Bowing your chin to your self, to your chest, and honoring the true self that's always inside of you. That's not defined by illness or jobs or anything else. Honoring the you that you are. Thanks so much for practicing, for joining, for all your focus and attention. If you're feeling a little spacey. You can just bring your fingertips in front of you and peek at the floor for a few breaths. And then come back up. 
So um, if you wish to share, you can type in the chat, you can send an email. Okay, um, if you have any questions about what we did or why we, we did it, okay, we a couple of things. Um, Adadir Sasana, which can help to even out the breath and steady the mind. This is a great thing to do if you just need a few moments to get centered again. Um, I see a message. Oh, thanks, Rhonda. Thank you so much. Um, if there's any other questions, please let me know. Other than that, thank you, everyone watching at home and now. Okay. Um, thank you so thanks much. Thanks for joining. Thank great. you. Yeah, thank thanks. you, Zoe. Thanks, Rhonda. Thanks, it's Ben. Great. Yeah, and um, I don't have anything else to say, but thank you so much. It's really <laughs> been an honor and, um, you know, keep practicing and it really can make such a shift in how we're thinking about things, even if it's for five minutes, right? Even if you're sitting someplace five minutes to do this and you might just feel like it shifts your day. So thank you. Thanks, Jen, and thanks, Rhonda. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks again. All right. right. Bye -bye. Have a wonderful night. Thank you, ladies. You too. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.